You know, Christian, the history of revenge reviews is been has been going on for quite a few years now. Yeah. We've recorded 30 shows, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe more. We've done some really bad movies. Yes. Some movies that were not as bad as we thought they were. Correct. Um, some actually good movies. We got maybe four in the can there. Mm-hmm. Um, we're different people than when we started. We are, yeah. Yeah, we are older. Yeah. Wiser. Some of us have changed more than others. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've had uh, four girlfriends yeah. mysteriously get murdered. That's not connected to this. Wow. But, you know. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ass- that was the movie last night, by the way. Yeah, I'm assuming you're doing the, we're talking about stuff, and then an explosion from, like, a sidewall yeah. just interrupts us. Yeah, because anytime history is talked about, man, we got to go in deep, because you got to know. Yeah. But anytime we start getting too close and the characters start to get to know each other, boom, can't let that shit happen. <laughs> Oh, man. Ugh. So what would you think of Aquaman? This was my pick. Ooh. Yeah, this was a good pick, man. I, uh, I, I take back. Honestly, I do honestly take back all the shit I talked about with, uh, <laughs> with Conan. <laughs> like, Conan was a pretty good movie, all things... You know, considered like was compared to this thing, like there was practical effects. Mm-hmm. I understood some characters, yeah. you know, uh, but fucking God, man, like there's no time to talk about anything I, in this fucking movie. I put it on and I'm like, you know, I thought it'd be like an easy breezy. It's two and a half hours long. This is like it, yeah. They thought they were Dude, making it feels Lawrence of every Arabia, bit of it. some kind of weird <laughs> epic. Not every superhero movie needs to be this giant, enormous, bombastic three-hour story. It's Aquaman. Right. He talks to fish. Mm-hmm. They could have knocked and, it out in a quick hour and a half. Dude, there, like it could easily be a two hours even. Like you, you can easily see where you can just get rid of a half an hour. Uh, I guess I was going to say anything with Black Manta, although he was actually my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, but he didn't really do anything. <laughs> <laughs> he looked cool. I mean, I guess, but I mean, there's, there's a thing that Marvel's got right, mm-hmm. is if it's in the comic, it won't look good on the big screen. You got to change it a little bit. Right. You got to make it work for the medium. Black Manta looks awesome. Yeah. In a comic book. He's got cool laser eyes. Yep. Like he is just badass all around. And he looks awesome Here, on he screen. He looks stupid. Okay. Well. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I can't get on board with you on that one. <laughs> all right. Um so the movie starts out with uh Jason Momoa narrating and he's got easily one of the dumbest voices I've heard in quite a long time. Like, Game of Thrones used him perfectly. He said very Mm -hmm. little. He looked intimidating. That was good. But then here he's like, my parents were like two ships crossing in the night. And then, like, a wall would explode, and then water stuff happened. That was probably the only fight scene I actually was remotely interested in. When Nicole Kidman fights people? Yeah, because, like, it was... Like, the camera work, like, you know, I could tell that there were different cameras, but the fisheye lens kind of made it look like it was all one one big shot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they just used, like, CGI to just sort of, like, sew all the images together. The de-aging looks great. That was, like, the best-looking fight scene in the whole movie. And the de-aging looks really good. Oh, dude, the de-aging looks awful. (laughs) I, I I hope that we have learned to never do that. No, we haven't. Again. We haven't at all. I, uh, it starts out with like Jango Fett finding, well, he lives in like a lighthouse, and then he finds Nicole Kidman washed on the shore. Um, 
it doesn't take the turn into the lighthouse like I thought it would, like the movie The Lighthouse. I thought it would be more... Dude, I love The Lighthouse. More masturbating and more <laughs> weird fart jokes than was in this movie, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Uh, but did you know that this is a prequel to The Lighthouse? <laughs> <laughs> That's Yeah, you're right. Because Yeah, because Willem Dafoe, you know, like he's uh, an Atlantean and then he's going to get banished and then he's going to go be Poseidon and... Right. And, get all over Rob Pattinson about how much he likes his lobster. There was a lot of deleted stuff, I'm sure, of him just eating beans. <laughs> like, oh, just you wait. It's going to pay off in the next one. You fucking fox. <laughs> <laughs> so they have, Nicole Kidman meets Django Fett. She washes up on the beach. He instinctively just takes mm-hmm. her in. Even though she, like, stabs his TV with a trident. Uh, but he's like, mm-hmm. no, I'll, I'll trust this person. They fall in love. Um... It's not Nicole Kidman's fault, but, um, you know, she's a great actress. I think she's Mm -hmm. always been pretty solid. Have you seen Big Little Lies? Yeah. Uh, I haven't. She's really good in it. Um, I don't ever believe that she has any attachment to any human being in any role I've seen her in. Like, anytime she's with kids or with, like, a love interest, I'm like, Nicole Kidman doesn't understand how human beings feel, so she can't project them that well. Because I did not believe that she was in love with Django Fett or that that curly-headed kid was hers. Yeah, I, I could see that. She just has, like, um, this weird detachment. It's like she's, like, Gwyneth Paltrow. <clears throat> like, they're from the same <clears throat> planet or something, but Gwyneth Paltrow's better at pretending to be a human being than Nicole Kidman is. <laughs> I, I honestly don't want to blame anyone's acting okay. in this movie. Uh, cause a lot of the times it does feel bad, but it's kind of like a prequel syndrome. Like, dude, it's hard to make this shit sound good. <laughs> that, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, so Nicole Kidman like leaves and then her son becomes the Aquaman. That's, that's the plot of the movie. Yep. Ocean man. <laughs> <laughs> Take me oh, I was doing hand. that like throughout the whole movie. Yeah, I love that song. <laughs> if the movie ended with that, yeah. with Jason Momoa like leaping out of the water and then just freeze frames and it goes, "Oh shit, man, take me by the hand," I would like it a lot better. Gonna fight some lobster armies <laughs> in the deep. <laughs> Does it? Atlantis looked a lot like a live action bikini bottom. That's not inaccurate. Do I? I was actually thinking um, it was more like. Uh, Thor's fucking home. Oh, Asgard? Uh, I, I, it, as soon as we started seeing, like, beams of light mm-hmm. everywhere, I'm like, oh, shit, Idris Elba's going to show up. <laughs> that would have been better. We got Willem Dafoe, and that ain't nothing. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it, that is true. Although he was, like, weirdly cast, right? Yeah, like, he just didn't fit you don't cast Willem Dafoe just to play some nice guy trainer dude I kept thinking he was gonna betray King Orem or something but that I mean he did but I thought it would be more of like an evil thing yeah but no he's he's a good guy all the way through what do you think of Jason Momoa as the Aquaman you know uh I've actually had a lot of time to think about this mm-hmm. um it's like the the idea of you know a blonde haired blue eyed Aquaman. He's kind of a white savior to, <laughs> to the to Atlanteans. To, <laughs> so I've like kind of let that part go. Uh-huh. But I I like the idea of he looks different. Mm-hmm. So he so he would be more admired than the other Atlanteans. Like it it's like part of making him look special. Okay. I don't know. I kind of would have liked a blonde-haired Jason Momoa, like a like a beach sandy sun-kissed blonde. You know, uh, like everything else but about I, him is exactly I, the same, yeah. but he has like just blonde hair slicked back. But everything else is the same yep. with him. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and and you know what? If they had given him a pet, I would have liked him more. <laughs> like a, I'm surprised he didn't have like a dog because he's such a bro in this movie. Yeah, he really is. Um. Look, I am in favor of, like, representation um, in films. Like, when Black Panther came out, um, I don't think that's a perfect movie, but I'm like, I think it's great that, like, there's a positive 
African American superhero that you know little kids can dress up as. I think that's great. Yeah, all the black people in this are bad guys. Well, no, I just mean like I think it's great that there's now an idiot jock superhero that can represent <laughs> for idiot jock children. They have yeah. their hero now. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, he's not bad. He just seems really stupid, except in scenes when he's like not supposed to be. Yeah, there was there was actually a lot of tonal problems. Like they just didn't. Jason Momoa having fun mm-hmm. is really entertaining to watch, but you need to know when he can have fun because there's a lot of times where he's like, "This is going to be fun," and it's just like a it should be like a really like intense moment. Yeah, no, that, that's nope. not, that's correct. <laughs> um, I legit like the scene in the bar in the beginning when those guys come up to him and he thinks they're going to fight him, but they just want a selfie. And there's like a little montage of him getting progressively drunker. That was cute. I did like that as well. That was a legit charming scene. Um, but everything else about him, he's just, like I say, just a dumb jock. Like when, so Black Manta and his dad are pirates, like submarine pirates or something. Mm-hmm. And then like, uh, uh, like something falls on his Black Manta's dad. Black Manta's mm-hmm. like, aren't you going to save me? And Momoa's like, oh, I don't know. I guess he got pwned by the ocean, bro. And then he like gets out or something and the guy drowns. <laughs> and, you know, he just he's just a very <laughs> dumb jock. But then some scenes, when they're going to uh, look through that bottle to see like where the mm-hmm. next part of the treasure is, and he knows all the backstories of these statues, and his girlfriend Mira's like, how do you know that? And he's like, Pops made sure I knew my history, bro. And I'm like, in the previous scene, he didn't know Pinocchio was based on a book. Yeah. I, I, when he said that line, I'm like, wait, what is that supposed to mean? Like, I don't, what, I don't get it. He's just an idiot. It was, it was just so stupid. It was so stupid, it completely went over my head. Oh, uh, what'd you think of Mira? Oh, the person who didn't like Jason Momoa and then kissed him. And then they had a sweet moment that would be appropriate for them to kiss. Yeah, yeah. What would you think of her? That was weird, <laughs> by the way. Um, she, I mean, she's just as, it's pretty funny. It's like, it's a deep ocean movie, but mm-hmm. everything is just so shallow. <laughs> like, the barest minimum yeah. of, of character development and motivation is, like, here. There's nothing more to these people like uh-huh. ocean master like, i don't even know what his like deal was like he wanted to conquer the lobster people he like, to be why? The ocean we never master. saw them until the third act like <laughs> and, and and mira's like i don't even know like why she's really even hanging around him apart from trying to find the trident but that that's just a weapon it doesn't they they don't really go into like how mystical or like why it is they just, they just talk about it's an old king's weapon and you got to go get it. This movie has like the same issue that like, it's just, it's, it's a specific trope I just noticed myself getting annoyed with where like Aquaman is like, oh, that tried it, bro. It's just a myth. All right. It doesn't exist. And I'm like, isn't your mom like a mermaid? Like, why is that hard yeah, for you to believe? But like your mother's a mermaid. And by this point he's fought alongside the Justice League, right? Yeah. But he can't believe there's a trident that makes you the ocean master, I guess. Um, I thought... I know, it was fucking weird. Mira's hydrokinesis was cool, how she could, like, move water. Although, I I could be wrong. I thought all Atlanteans can do that in the comics, move water. Yeah, I thought so, too, because, like, in Young Justice, like, they have, like, a school teaching people how to do it. Yeah, it's like Jedi training Padawans, just... <laughs> Yeah, and like Aqualad, like he's a fucking master of the hydrokinesis. And this movie actually made me want to go back and watch like all the cartoons. Like the Justice League? Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Young Justice again. Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond, yeah. <laughs> um, she was fine, I guess. <laughs> they try to like do this whole like romancing to stone type romance between the two of them they're basically playing um the two leads in jurassic world where Mm -hmm. she's like a stuffy smart lady and he's like a dumbass Mm -hmm. and they're supposed to fall in love and she finds him charming i guess uh and then at the end they make out they don't really have any chemistry no none none whatsoever um (laughs) 
and that's <laughs> fine. Ocean Master, um, okay, so this was directed by James Wan, who also did uh, The Conjuring and Insidious. Yep. That also have Patrick saw, Wilson. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He just looks uncomfortable in the whole movie. None of these guys, know, it's again, it's prequel syndrome. Like all these people don't know what they're looking at. Right, they're I, just talking to tennis balls the whole movie. Exactly. I feel like Patrick Wilson the most seemed like he maybe wasn't comfortable with all the CGI stuff. Because he's a good yeah. actor. Like I'm, I'm currently watching, yeah. uh, rewatching Fargo season two, which he's in. Mm-hmm. And he's great in that. But watching him as Ocean Master, he just looks weird and uncomfortable and his character he wants to be the ocean master i guess he it's got this whole like loki thing where like he's the brother he feels like he should be in charge i guess Mm -hmm. um and that's just his plot just to be evil yeah like he's he's got no other thing really i mean like i like ocean master's costume (laughs) but that's cosmetic. That's not character. I like, like his he helmet. Could, he could just not be wearing a costume and just have a better character, and I'd be fine with it. He, um, <laughs> there's a lot of scenes of Jason Momoa, again, just being a total dumbass, where he gets himself in situations where he's like, yeah, the Ring of Fire challenge, bro. Yeah, let's do that. And then immediately he's like, wait a minute, what is that? And I'm like, this is the guy that's the hero of the movie. Like, you want him to be the ruler of the oceans? He just yeah. acts first, asks questions, <laughs> never... Yeah, I like the, it's hard for me to talk about this movie because everything that could possibly go wrong with with making a movie has gone wrong. Like I don't it's I don't agree with you on it's that. It's the opposite of well, I mean it, it's like the opposite of Ed Wood. <laughs> like Ed Wood, you know, super charismatic, has a real passion for filmmaking, absolutely none of the technical skills. Mhm. Uh-huh. This movie, all of the technical skills, none of the passion. It feels like a machine-made money machine. Except for Jason Momoa, who's clearly having a good time. He is having such a good time. I just, I, I, I just, I just wish this was a good movie. Like, I, I, I don't really know how else to say other than, I just wish they took real filmmaking mm-hmm. storytelling like lessons and just applied it to this it's a gorgeous it's just, film it's just hard for me to say anything else it looks really pretty i didn't think so it was just too much visual diarrhea for me there's so much shit to look at i felt like that when they got into the trench and they were fighting like davy jones's crew or whatever i was like i've officially kind of checked out now oh at the the lobster people at the no, end? no, the lobster people was one thing. The trench people look like creatures from Prometheus. Like the oh, weird underwater. Yeah, when they're things. on the little dinghy boat. Yeah. Uh, so Ocean Master's plan is to, like, well, first he takes all the pollution and stuff and, like, garbage in the water and pushes it on the shores, which you think yep. is going to be, like, a bigger thing, but it's really never mentioned again. Yeah, and it's like such a short-lived plan. Like, dude, it's just going to run back into the ocean. You know there was a scene of, like, the world leaders after that where it's like, what are we going to do with all this trash? And then one person's like, okay, I know I'm super unpopular and you guys aren't going to like this. And this is, again, this is the world leaders. I say we push it back into the ocean? Like, France, you bitch. (laughs) And it's like, come on, let's just push it back into the ocean, guys. Okay. Like, there's a scene after that of just, like, all these trucks, like, bulldozing the garbage back into the water. Yeah, I, I bet that was a deleted scene. Yeah. I, he, I... He wants to, like, just, cause a war, I guess. There's this whole scene where he's, like, talking with Dolph Lundgren, who's in this movie, and Willem Dafoe, and they're having some council meeting, and then, like, a submarine comes, and they're like... Meeting off, meeting off, and then they go, and then the submarine shoots a missile, and they're like, meeting back on, and then they they go back, and then they're like, oh, this cannot stand. We must fight the people on the surface now, and I will unite all the ocean tribes and become the ocean master. I should be your king, because he's like a chip on his shoulder or something. 
Yeah. And then there's a subplot <laughs> with Nicole Kidman being in the Land of the Lost. <laughs> they, like, find Nicole Kidman, and they thought she was dead, but she's not. And there's, like, dinosaurs with her and a, a Julie Andrews Kraken. Yeah, uh, that was weird to me. Mary Poppins is the Kraken. For, like, And one she scene. shows up in, like, the third act. Uh-huh. Like, there, there's a rule that is nigh unbreakable, is uh-huh. you don't introduce new things in the third act. <laughs> or you don't introduce and your Julie g- Andrews in the third act. Get your shit together, <clears throat> James Wan. Uh, yeah, like, I, it's, hard, it's really hard for me to, like, not feel heartbroken about <laughs> what I watched last night. Like, I feel so, I felt empty inside like it was just so long and so bad and every every part of me just died and so we were just like what are we gonna watch now like well, let's watch a good movie i can't go to sleep like this let's watch shape of water yeah i've never seen shape of water did you like God it damn shape of water brought me back to life you're like let's watch a good movie let's watch justice league Ugh. Which, okay, look, <laughs> we did Justice League on this podcast. I've seen Justice League twice. I saw it in theaters, and I saw it for the podcast we did. Um, Aquaman is probably a worse movie, but I feel like I'm going to remember more of it. Because, like, I again, I've seen Justice League twice. I mainly remember Superman fighting the Justice League, and then that weird creepy song that starts out the movie where it's like a little girl Mm -hmm. she's like superman i'm sorry you're dead please come back from hell i don't remember what it was about but that's mostly what i remember (laughs) about Uh justice league i feel like i will remember more of aquaman just because of how bizarre it was it it's really weird because uh the problem that justice league had was that none of the scenes were connected. Uh-huh. It, it just, things just happened and, and there's no like, there was no cause and effect in that movie. Uh-huh. There's cause and effect in this movie, but it's done bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just so much shit for me to watch. It was like, it was like I was just being hypnotized by flashing lights. Did you watch the post credit scene? Yeah, the meaningless... <laughs> Oh, you mean Black Manta's not dead? <laughs> so, James Wan, I guess, also directed one of the Fast and the Furious movies. I don't know which one. I guess, I don't know I've if never seen saw him. it. But um, I feel like that version of action is utilized in this and how Jason Momoa just slaughters through human beings <laughs> in that, like, <laughs> opening submarine scene. And then, yeah. like... He, like, just bashes Black Manta's brains in and, like, throws him off a cliff. And Black Manta hits every rock on the way down. <laughs> but then he's alive yeah, at the end. Does. And he teams up with James Parks. Like, Randall Parks? Randall Parks. And they're like, oh. Who is Randall know. Parks? What? I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> he's the Asian guy. <laughs> the Asian scientist mm-hmm. guy. And he's like, oh, I'm going to... We're really going to be Black Manta 2, and they look in the camera or something. I don't know. It's really stupid. It's setting up their teaming up. <laughs> hmm. did, did, honestly, dude, this was a really good pick. Thanks. Thank you. Because this movie hurt really bad. It was just long. Like, it I, really is. I put it on yesterday, and I was going to go see my girlfriend after I saw the movie, and I went to see at the comic book store after, before that. And I thought I'd have, like, way more time. And then I put it on, and I'm like, I'm going to be here for, like, a minute. And I kept pausing to take bathroom breaks, and it was just a mm-hmm. long, arduous experience. Uh, it wasn't – it's not like the worst thing we've seen. It was just – I mean, Conan was better. You're right. Conan's a better film than this because it was tighter, yeah. and they knew what it was from the get-go. Yeah. Uh, oh, this – this is like a real nitpick. I'm going to be honest. This is a nitpick and it's like a, almost like a, a, a storyteller preference. Uh-huh. Um, but I've been watching a good bit of uh, Guillermo del Toro movies. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and, you know, his big thing is 
the big ugly monsters aren't all bad. Right. Like just because they're ugly and scary doesn't mean they're the bad guys. They have that in this and, with Nicole Kidman. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, but this movie's the uglier and scarier a monster is, the more evil it is. <laughs> or the more of a force of destruction it is. You're talking about the Kraken? The Kraken, you got the uh, weird, like, weird spiny monster things that attack them on the boat, mm-hmm. and then the evil lobster people. Mm-hmm. And then the gross-looking mermaids, who aren't all that bad, but they're a little bad because they're just a little gross. Uh And then you got the big, like, giant xenomorph queen at the end. (laughs) Then again, it's Julie Andrews for literally one scene, and then it just roars for the whole rest of the movie. I I do. I thought that was a completely different monster. Because she didn't come up and start, like, talking like Julie Andrews? Well, I mean, the tentacles look different. I just didn't really notice. Like, because I mean, the when he's going to get the trident, the tentacles almost look like lampreys, mm-hmm. and then afterwards they just look like regular tentacles, and don't, they're not all like spiny. Is there a reason? But, I mean, Nicole I, Kidman I, couldn't I have gotten the trident to get out. Uh, <laughs> I know it's maybe a nope. fool's errand to question that. <clears throat> yeah. There's a lot of se- maybe. Oh yeah. Did you notice there's a lot of sequences where like they would be in one location, and then they just wouldn't be like they're in the desert. And then they're just in Sicily. And I was like, did I, did I miss how they got out of there? And then yeah, like, I, I, I was doing the same thing. They're in the land of the lost, and then they're just not. And I was like, did I, did I miss something? Yeah, like, they're, like it was, yeah, it was like right when they're in the desert. And then they fall into the land of the lost, which is weird because it's a sand dune. But I could clearly see the sky. <laughs> from under it like i why am i questioning this movie like this movie doesn't care it's like playing fast and loose with the rules was he the only one who could talk to fish or could other people also talk to fish i was so confused on that because like yeah in the comics like almost like all of them all of people in his bloodline Mm -hmm. can talk to fish yeah and like they all have like at least, you know, limited fish talking abilities. But yeah, I guess he's just the only one in this movie. But Julie Andrews is like, you can understand me? <laughs> Especially because, like, okay, they keep bringing about the fact he's like a half breed and like his dad's a human, his mom's Nicole Kidman. And I kept like mm-hmm. thinking that that would be a weakness at some point. Like, I thought it would be funny if he had all of the same powers but couldn't breathe underwater. Like, that's his weakness. <laughs> If he was like, oh, yeah. I can talk to fish, and I can, like, move water. I can't breathe underwater, though. Sorry, guys. I <laughs> like, I can do all this, but I can't actually do anything to help you guys. My dad's a human. What do you want from me? I'm sorry. Yeah, like, they, they keep, you know, as they, like, propel themselves through the water, they keep making air bubbles. Uh-huh. Which, that only works if you have air around you as you're propelling. Uh-huh. But... When they talk, there are no bubbles. I just thought there would be some kind of weakness to having a human father for him, but that there never is. He has all of their strengths and some more strengths because no, he can talk to fish. he's just a god. Yeah. <clears throat> he's just a god that you can't uh, relate to. He's just a sick dude, bro. Yeah. Like, this movie, this movie probably more than all the others uh, really helped me understand that Marvel is the exception <laughs> and not the rule right. that superhero movies are, are usually bad. Yeah. Although, look, I, I will good watch... fucking I'll, God. I will watch the sequel for this. Not in theaters, <laughs> but I will eventually rent the sequel. I don't know. Like, Marvel's had... You know, they finished their entire epic 10-year story arc. I'm, I really want some... I'm ready for hero deconstruction. I'm ready for more shit like like Watchmen, but not more Watchmen. Like Watchmen <laughs> and The Boys. Right. I, 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 I crave it now. But just more empty, unrelatable gods doing incredible things that I can't relate to. I just, I'm kind of done. Are you saying you can't relate to a swole-ass, long-haired, gorgeous 
Jason Momoa, who has like no real weaknesses and everybody just loves and he's super charming and is never in any real mm-hmm. danger. And he just kind of like lucks into being the king of everything in the water. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Jason Momoa is so, he's good in Game of Thrones. He's mm-hmm. in like 10 episodes and he's just speaking Klingon the whole time. Right. And he's great. Like there, there's, I could feel so much emotion and compassion, mm-hmm. like as he's like you know telling Khaleesi that you are my moon, and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And, and then there's shit like this. I, like, I kind of want to go back and watch some episodes of Stargate Atlantis mm-hmm. just to see how good he is. Is he on that show? He's like one of the main characters. He's in like every episode. I've never watched Stargate. I haven't either, but. Watching old Star Trek's kind of giving me a craven for more of that stuff. <laughs> well, you got it, Matt. That scratch that itch with Aquaman. Yeah. I. Mm. I don't have anything else to say about yeah. it, do you? Uh. Did you think? Okay, I legit thought when Nicole Kidman pops up at the end, and when they're having like the big fight with Fish Guy mm-hmm. and Ocean Master. I thought that, like, she was going to hug Ocean Master and he was going to, like, stab her with his trident. Like, Kylo Ren, that bitch. I, yeah, I did, too. But he just kind of goes away peacefully. He just gets arrested, I guess, and goes to, like, fish prison at the Give end. Give him a view. And he's just like, thank you. I know I've done wrong. <laughs> uh, p- p- what? <laughs> he's like, I guess I'll be back in the sequel. They're taking me to fish prison. Yeah. I, and, I, again, I know this is just hammering on to how bad of a movie this is, uh-huh. but... Entire families are wiped out in this last scene, mm-hmm. but they're just like, "Hail Arthur, mm-hmm. King of the Atlanteans!" Like we are have a king now. Everything's hunky dory again. Mm-hmm. Like, like are we just gonna forget that you just had a brutal war five seconds ago? I want the follow up of like Fish Court, where they prosecute. <laughs> don't don't. Yeah, and the judge is like uh, a manatee, but with like a, a judge's robe still and like a judge's wig. <laughs> like they do it like it's British court. It's just Bojack Horseman <laughs> under the sea. Yeah, yeah, but with like Prince Orem or whatever. <laughs> he has like a Johnny Cochran-like oh. swordfish attorney. <laughs> also, also, how much, I, for me, there was a defining line of, hey, for me, it was it turned into How to Train Your Dragon Two as soon as we met the mom. I've never seen that movie. What? Yeah. Oh man. I, we, I saw the first one, and like but I went into it with a movie? bad attitude. Oh. So I need to rewatch it with fresh eyes. I think I think you should because they're really charming movies. Are they better than Shrek? And uh, <laughs> I mean, they're different. <laughs> that, that's not what I asked you, was it? Shrek's, Shrek's cynical, and How to Train Your Dragon's like very optimistic. So it's not better than Shrek. But, but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's so... It, it's the same scene. Like, you go to find, you know, this other toothless dragon, mm-hmm. and then pop, there's your mom, who you thought was dead the whole time. Like... And then a big dragon that looks similar to the one at the end of Aquaman mm-hmm. is just like trying to de- destroy a whole bunch of things and it's mindless and rah. It's the same fucking. As soon as we meet Aquaman's mom, it's the same as How to Train Your Dragon 2. It's also basically Ant Man and the Wasp. I don't know if you saw that one. It is also that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Because she comes back and she's got like warrior garb mm-hmm. and like white hair now. Yeah, why is that a trope? I don't know. <laughs> it's like but they all do it yeah like how to train a dragon even like she looks like a monster and then she takes off her shit and she's a human <laughs> <laughs> like, i don't know why that's such a trope i don't know um <clears throat> i liked it less than shazam uh yeah i i still like shazam and man of steel i unironically still enjoy those for the dc movies Mm-hmm. But I thought Aquaman was better than like Justice League and Suicide Squad and is there anything else? Oh, Wonder Woman's better than all those. <laughs> I, I do like Wonder Woman. I I I like the first two acts of Wonder Woman, but man, that third act just kills me still. Yeah, I mean, I just, it's still in the transition yeah. phase where all the villains are giant smoke monsters with like yeah. lightning and dark <laughs> shit, and you can't see what's happening. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, I don't know. This isn't that. At least I got away from that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's various degrees of smelly, smelly shit. <laughs> yeah. This smelled really bad, but I guess I've smelled worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not much worse, because this was really excruciating for me, but... Mm. This is a long, <laughs> runny seafood dump. After you ate, like, bad seafood, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You're like, lock the door, <laughs> I'm going to be in here for a minute. <laughs> Should we just, like, our rating system, is it just going to be, like, various degrees of poop and things that you ate to make the poop? <laughs> I feel like I'm better than that, but yeah, sure, why not? Let's just yeah. let's roll with this. For, this. for this one, it's... It's Long John Silver's seafood. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Fried, golden, not nutritious, mm-hmm. but as soon as you eat it, it just comes right on out. No, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah. Oof. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm good on this one. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say about it. Um, it just hurt. It was just so goddamn long. <laughs> What's your next pick? Or do you want to do the news first? Uh, um... <clears throat> No, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, so, I've, I have heard so many tales about <clears throat> how bad this movie is. Uh-huh. But I've never seen it, and I don't think I've ever seen it on anything. <clears throat> <clears throat> we are going to watch Zardoz. I never even heard of that. It's... 1974, Sean Connery. Okay. That's a gamble for you. Again, picking movies that you haven't seen. Yeah, never seen, but I've heard, and it's not a comedy. It's like a weird, I think, space detective thing. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to look up this fucking synopsis. Here we go. In the future, Earth is ruled by Eternals, an advanced and secret sect of beings who reign over a savage group called Brutals. The Eternals have created a god named Zardoz to intimidate the Brutals, making them believe that killing is their natural state. However, Zed, Sean Connery, a brutal warrior, challenges that assumption when he enters the Zardoz monument and is captured by an Eternal. There he learns okay, the stop, truth stop, 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 stop. the Eternals and the false god that rules society. I want some surprises here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who plays Zardoz? Uh, I don't know. Let's go to IMDB. I wonder if Zardoz is just like a nameless or like a faceless god. Uh, yeah, as far as the IMDb page goes, no one is Zardoz. Okay. All right, I'm done. There's a person named Consuela. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> like, on the planet? Uh, I guess. <laughs> I don't... I'm, is, she, is she a cleaning lady? I know that's fucked up to say. I'm just... Is that... <laughs> I mean, she's second build, so I, I, maybe she's a really good cleaning lady. There we go. I don't know. Yeah. Again, that's fucked up to say, but I was just piling on the joke. Yeah. Um, so for news, the Bill and Ted 3 trailer. I know I was excited uh-huh. ab- about it because, you know, it's just more Bill and Ted. Yay. Right. But they look really old. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> And maybe they really could, old. Maybe they could play into that. I don't think it's a great trailer, but I just I'm happy to see those dudes again. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I agree. Uh-huh. Um, it, it is a teaser trailer, although technically it was like a full on trailer. Right. But yeah, it uh, they look really old, and that prison scene uh-huh. with them in like the muscle suits. Uh-huh. I, it mm, cheap muscle suits. It, I don't know. It, I don't know what to say. It just looked fucking weird. <laughs> Bill and Ted isn't some like sacred property. I'm not expecting a lot. I just want a good time. If right. they just give me some laughs with these two guys, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited. I mean, yeah, the trailer wasn't great, but I, I'm looking forward to it. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm looking forward to it more than I am anything DC has to throw at us. <laughs> okay, it'll be better. It's not going to be as good as Wonder Woman 2, which I, I think might be pretty good. They have 80s I stuff. Ooh, remember <laughs> the 80s? Do you remember? Uh, and then the other thing is the Michael Keaton news. He's yep. going to be in the Flashpoint. Sticking with the theme of DC. He's going to be in the Flashpoint movie playing... His version of Batman is an older man. Thoughts? I can't say that I care. Uh, I'm glad Michael Keaton's getting paid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, and, and, you know, it kind of makes uh, Birdman more, more prophetic. Because he went back to, the, back to the well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. Look, I mean, <laughs> Warner Brothers, I've made this analogy before in an earlier podcast. I don't remember what the news was, but... They're basically like just an exasperated. They're Veruca Salt's father from Willy Wonka. Just like, what do you, yeah. what do you want? They're mm-hmm. like sweaty and red faced. Like, yeah, what do you want? What do you want to make you happy, fans? You want Michael Keaton's Batman? He's back. Okay, will you come see our movie now? Like, it's just how I picture Warner Brothers. So it's like, yeah, you flash movie. They don't know how it's gonna do. Uh, Ezra, what's his name? What's Michael Ezra? Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller. Yeah. We need to talk about Kevin. He's a little bit of a controversial figure now, and. You know, why? Huh? Uh, well, he well, there's a video of him where he like put his hands on a woman in an aggressive way, and I guess he said some things that have been kind of controversial. So you know, they're not sure how hmm. the movie will do. So they're like, "What if we throw in everyone's favorite Batman? Will that will that make you happy?" I'm fine with it. Whatever. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, maybe they caught him on a bad day. I don't know. I didn't. This is, I mean, this is the first time I'm ever hearing of it. I just, I hope but, Michael Keaton, mm-hmm. his costume is all turtlenecks when he's Bruce Wayne. I hope they bring <laughs> that back. <laughs> he just has various nuts that he goes and gets. <laughs> all the goodies, <laughs> all your favorite bits. <laughs> he's back, baby. <laughs> all your favorite lines. <laughs> you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? That wasn't him. He's going to say it. All your favorite parts. <laughs> Of the first two Joker's <laughs> back. Why not? Um. He's going to bite off a nose. <laughs> Who, let, sure. Um. Do you think they'll bring back Michelle Pfeiffer? They can. She's still technically alive. Yeah. Yeah. She's still hot, too. <laughs> I don't like that you said that, but I know that that's mentality <laughs> of movie makers. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, yeah that's, that's why I said it. Yeah. Let's get Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> not that I believe in that, but I know they do. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, I don't know. My Michael Goff is dead, his Alfred, but I don't know. They can just bring him back digitally. Yeah, Michael Caine ain't doing anything. <laughs> okay, so, it's the Michael Keaton Batman <laughs> with the Michael Caine Alfred, who's like the same age as him? That's what you want? I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. A ruby the size Man. of a tangerine. <laughs> the bandit <laughs> and Burma have been throwing them away. That's my Michael Caine. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Some men just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm down for Michael Keaton to come back. Because, look, it's just fun. I don't care. It, I like that character. They'll bring back Danny Elfman, assumingly, to score his parts. If it was reused music. Remember they reused the music in Justice League? The Batman 89 music? Uh, dude, I, I, I want so badly... For a superhero movie to have that rem- that memorable theme again, I like the Man of Steel score. I know, I guess people don't remember. I don't. It. I don't remember what it is. I really like the Man of Steel theme, um, but even in Justice League, they reused the John Williams super music again. Warner Brothers is just like frantically throwing shit together that people already like and giving it to us again. Fine. I mean, like, I, I just don't understand why they can't do what Marvel did and take a story that already exists and just retool it for the modern age. Because they don't have confidence in what they're doing. They're just trying to make a buck. <laughs> then, then yeah, give it to, a, to a, like an Artur who wants to fucking do something cool with it. I think the director of Flash currently, because they've changed directors, is a guy who did It Chapter 1 and 2, Andy Muschietti. Ugh. Oh, I did not like your face when you, <laughs> when you heard that news. What does that expression Ooh. mean? <laughs> Like, I know people like It, but I hated both of those movies. Okay. 
Like, especially It too, man. Oh, It was a mess. Was, that one was just so bad. Do you think... They'll, okay, clearly they'll have a scene when The Flash will, like, go into the Tim Burton verse, and you're right. He'll be like, oh, this is nuts. And then Michael Keaton will mm-hmm. turn around in a turtleneck, and he'll be like, you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. And then he just winks. Oh, that guy did uh, Mama. Yeah, but I liked Mama. I didn't see that. And that's all. He's got, like, nine upcoming projects, but, like, a handful of... Like five things he's done. <laughs> Jesus. The Flash, Attack on Titan, uh, Robotech, The Howling, Time Machine. They're remaking The Howling? Dracul. What? Dude, this dude is doing like nothing original. <laughs> oh, he's got it. Like, oh my it. God. That's, that kind of hurts my feelings. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's all I got for news. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, I mean, really, that's all I got for, yeah, everything else. That, that movie just hurt. And next is, what's it called? Xerox? What's the next one? Xanadu? <laughs> <laughs> we are watching Xerox starring Sean Connery. <laughs> Zardoz. I'm ready. Oh, uh, me too. Man, we, yeah, we're cranking these things out again. My girlfriend's listening to him now, so that's neat. Yeah, she is. I, uh, I'm proud of her. <laughs> I haven't even met her yet. No, she's great. Uh. <laughs> All right. What? You did meet her. What? You said you didn't meet her yet. Oh, you're talking about your girlfriend. I was talking about my girlfriend. Oh, your girlfriend. Oh, I know my girlfriend listens. No, my girlfriend's also listening to them. Oh. So we're both bad significant others. Because we're making yeah. our girlfriends <laughs> listen to this. Why are we subjecting the people we love to this? I don't know. We're monsters. Yeah. What's your girlfriend's name again? What was that? What's your girlfriend's name again? Oh, Sophie. Sophie. Hi, Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> this will be a test, which I don't like doing in relationships, but... She says she's yeah, listening no, to them. Yeah, yeah. So she comments. We're almost, we're almost 30. We're a little old for that. But if she comments on the fact that you gave her a shout out, then I'll know she's really listening to them. If not. <laughs> yeah, it's like what I do with my dad every other episode. <laughs> Which he still never commented <laughs> on, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Damn you, Mr. Josie. He, oh, yeah. He showed up. Uh, Mom and dad actually came to visit me uh, two days ago over the weekend. How was that? Uh, it was overall, it was good. Good, good, I'm glad. Overall, it was good. Yeah. We can talk um, about that after this. We don't yeah, need he's, to. He's finally admitted that he just doesn't have time to listen to these, <laughs> which is good because it's better than lying to me. You're just having like a <laughs> tense dinner and you're like finger tapping on the table. So, what'd you think of uh, the Conan one, huh? He's just like <laughs> eating chicken. He's like, what? Uh, it was, it, it was good. What's your favorite part, huh? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> You liked it? You liked the episode? <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> uh, uh, nope. Till next time. All right. Let's yeah. Let's lay this one to rest. Goodbye, everyone out there. So Sophie and Megan. <laughs> <laughs>